Mid Journey has changed a lot in the past year, especially with this newest update known as version 6. In this video, I'll give you a breakdown of what has changed, I'll explain all of the different features of Mid Journey, and I'll tell you what else you can expect in the next 12 months. There will be timestamps below the video, so feel free to click around. Alright, first let's talk about prompting. Prompting in version 6 is very different. In order to start a prompt, you're going to hit forward slash imagine. Let me show you an example of a version 5 prompt. It would look something like this. A blue sports car in Monaco, comma, pink road, comma, overcast weather. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it didn't really listen to what I asked for. Sure, we get a blue car in some of them, but no pink road. And then in images 1 and 2, we actually get a pink car even though we specifically asked for a blue sports car. This was Midjourney's capabilities all the way up until version 5.2, just a couple of weeks ago. Now, you could write this exact same prompt in version 6, and it will look something like this. We definitely have a blue sports car now on a pink road, but this isn't exactly the best way to speak to the AI. Instead, in version 6, we would write something more like this. Wide-angle product photo of a sports car in Monaco. The sports car is bright blue. The road is painted pink. The weather is overcast. It's not very poetic, but look at the results. The details all get picked up by the bot. That's how powerful Mid Journey version 6 is. Another result of the same prompt, just look at number 1 here. Look how pink that road is. Now it might take some time to get used to prompting like this, where you have to sort of add as much detail as you can think of. Any details that you do not mention are going to be filled in by Mid Journey. Let me show you one more example of the difference between version 5 and version 6. Here's a prompt from version 5.2. A horse running through the field, oil painting, double exposure, glitch core, aggressive inertia. And it's going to create something beautiful like this. Version 5 was amazing in its own right. But if you use this prompt in version 6, you would get something like these. First of all, it doesn't really look like how it did in version 5. And these aren't very great. I mean, I don't like the look of them. So how would you rewrite this prompt in version 6? Well, in my opinion, I would write it similar to this. An oil painting of an aggressive horse. The horse is running through the field with intense inertia. There is a double exposure effect with a glitchy nature. And I think we get results that look a lot more like what we wanted in version 5.2. I'm just trying to show you that rewriting a prompt is necessary when transferring your ideas from the old bot to the new bot. And if you're new here, my name is Nolan, and it's my goal to teach AI in a digestible way. I want to make this easy on you, and if you think I'm helping so far, please consider leaving a like on this video so we can share it with more people. Now how much detail should you add to your prompt? Well, if you've seen my previous introductory video on version 6, this process might seem familiar, but we're going to go through it again here. What I'm suggesting you do is start small. Start with a very simple prompt and then elaborate. Add as much detail as you can think of, but consider adding these details one at a time so you can see whether the AI is following along with your vision. I want to thank a YouTube comment I got from Alec here. I don't want to mispronounce your name, but they said if you wanted to test the coherence of a prompt, start at the top and work your way down. So here we have the idea of a full body shot of a man wearing a celestial crown. Beautiful work so far, Mid Journey. But what else can we add? Well, honestly, anything you can think of. And I'm going to stick with colors for now just so you can clearly see the differences. So we have a full body shot of a man wearing a celestial crown and blue sunglasses. Perfect, Mid Journey nails it. Now you have to notice that they're not the same crowns as before, and that's because anytime you add to your prompt, the whole generation changes. This example is just to show you that Mid Journey will listen to each detail you add. And I'm also showing you here that I like to write these prompts pretty matter-of-factly. No poetry is really necessary. I ended the first part with a period, and then I say, the man has red earrings. Sure enough, we have everything we've asked for so far. But we can keep going. The man is wearing a green sweater. Mid-journey nails it. Different look of a person though, that's for sure. I went on to combine the next two details in one sentence. The man is wearing blue shorts with a red belt. Again, I'm just using colors to emphasize all of the details you can add, but this really is limitless. You could think of anything to put in your prompts. I added that the man is wearing golden shoes. Didn't show up in number one, but we have gold shoes in two, three, and four. 
the more details you add, the less of a chance you're going to get a 4 out of 4 perfect grid, and that's okay. Honestly, I think even 25%, 1 out of 4 is going to be good enough for everybody. All you need is one perfect picture. I even added afterwards, the man has pink socks on. Now we have everything we've asked for, golden shoes plus pink socks. That is so funny. And to be completely honest, I think you could add details as into what type of clothing they are. Maybe pattern socks. Maybe you could specify the material on the sweater. I'm telling you, there are kind of endless possibilities now. And it's only going to get more powerful as time goes on. So try your best to start thinking in this new way of prompting. I then added in an extra accessory. The man is standing on an all-white skateboard. In number 3 and 4, the proportions of the body aren't quite right. But I think number one and number two look okay, and we have a white skateboard. Next, I set my sights on the background, and I wrote it very simply. The background is a decrepit space station. And the first thing I notice, at least, is that some of the generations turned into a cartoon. And I have found that that happens with the more details you add. So, now what you might want to do is add some specific terms that reflect a photorealistic environment. I changed the background part of the prompt to a decrepit, old, spooky, cinematic space station. And we get these, which are all present in reality. But now I want to show you that there are different ways to write the prompt. There is no exact formula. I showed you how to do it one detail by one detail, but you can mix up the way you express those details. Like, take a look at this first sentence. I turned it into a full-body cinematic still of a man standing on an all-white skateboard wearing a celestial crown, blue sunglasses, and red earrings. The exact same idea, just worded a little differently. You could even try mixing up the order of the details, in this case, the background. Full body, cinematic still of a man standing in a decrepit old spooky space station. He is wearing the crown, the glasses, and the earrings. He is wearing the green sweater, the blue shorts, the red belt. He has pink socks underneath golden shoes. And he is standing on a white skateboard. And look at number two here, like that, it, that's what we described. That's how powerful Mid Journey is. And these were just examples of showing you a lot of detail, plus showing you that you can write it in a few different ways. Again, there's no right answer. Be as descriptive as you can, or Mid Journey is going to fill in the blanks for you. I have a few more examples of different prompting techniques, but first, let me show you how to add text to your images. In Midjourney version 6, you can add text to your images by putting words in quotation marks. So here we have an old-timey computer screen that says, Hello world. Don't worry about C4 for now, we're going to get to that in the parameters section. What I want you to take away from this is the fact that you can express certain words inside of your generations now. Number 1 worked really well, number 3 kind of didn't work at all. Text is a bit hit or miss at the moment. First, it's way easier to accomplish with short words. However, I do want to point out there is an expected update to the text generation coming very soon, probably by the time you're watching this, which means that any limitations you see now might not be a problem in the future. Just keep that in mind. The main point is that you can now add text to your pictures by placing words inside of quotation marks in your prompt. One little extra trick that you might want to try with regards to text and honestly any prompt is by using dash dash style raw. This is a variation of the mid journey bot that will have a more literal interpretation of your prompt. Style raw is recommended in two situations. First is when you've written a longer prompt. You know what you want and you want mid journey to listen to you. Style raw has a good chance of getting you there. The second time you might want to use Style Raw is when the base Mid Journey bot isn't working, it's just not listening to you. There is no harm in trying Style Raw, and in this case, when generating text, Style Raw might give you better results. It's sort of the first thing I experiment with when I'm trying to figure out a prompt. Here's a cool example of text, a neon sign on a dark black wall background. It didn't include everything I wanted. I wanted that little heart symbol at the end and it just couldn't fit it in, although Mid Journey worked out pretty well here. And it's not quite front facing, but maybe I just didn't describe that in the correct way. And I wanted to show you just how cool this generation is that the J extends below, turning into the V for the version 6. Like, that's that's art right there. That is so cool. If you want more tips on generating text, I suggest you check out one of my videos. I think it should be maybe right here. But make sure you come back to this video after. We have a lot more to go over. 
And with regards to text, the more complicated your prompt is, the less likely it's going to work. For now, again, these limitations might be erased in the future. A beautiful woman with mid-journey tattooed across her forehead. Kind of. V6 is tattooed on her left cheek. Kind of. And a heart symbol is tattooed on her right cheek. Now, with version 6, you can specify where things appear in the picture. However, maybe I'm getting confused. I was under the impression that when we say left, we're getting it from our perspective. So her left cheek would technically be her right cheek. You know, if she was facing us, you know what I mean? But in this, I asked for V6 on her left cheek and it interpreted that as her real left cheek. I don't know if that's a glitch. I'm pretty sure it's all from our perspective. So maybe this complicated nature of the prompt just made Midjourney bug out a little. Just wanted to point that out. And now the last thing I want to mention to you with regards to prompting is what to do when the bot just isn't quite getting what you're asking for. Here's a prompt from version 5.2. We're going to take that sports car in Monaco, same idea as before. But at the end, we want some double exposure. We want some glitchiness. And we're going to get results like this, some pretty cool looking images. The details like the color of the car, they're not really important here. I'm more worried about the overall aesthetic. And if we tried to generate that same effect in version 6 by using words like there is a glitchy double exposure effect on the photo, it doesn't quite turn out at least how I had in my mind. So what do we do? We're going to use multi-prompting. Multi-prompting is quite powerful in mid-journey version 6, maybe a little too powerful right now. It involves the process of splitting up your prompt by using two colons and then adding in different weighted values. So the first part would look something like this. There is a double exposure effect with glitchy elements on the photo, colon, colon. And then we're going to use this sort of callback effect where we're going to repeat what we wanted, similar to the cowbell method or maybe the slider method as it used to be known in version 5. Similar, we're basically going to repeat what we want and add a small weight to it. In this case, it's the words glitch core, double exposure, 0.5 as a weight. When you don't specify a weight, like for the first part of our prompt, the default value is 1. If we would have made this value 1.5 or anything above 1, glitch core double exposure would be more important to the bot. And we don't want that. We just want a little bit of an accent, a little bit of salt, a little bit of spice. And we're starting to get some results like these, which maybe is a little closer. Like here in number 2, we're starting to get some sort of effect. So you could bump up that value a little. Glitch core double exposure 0.8. And like, look at number 3, look at number 4. That is so cool. And that's the power of multi-prompting. When you're not getting what you want, you can add a little bit more of it to the end with just a little bit extra weight. It's really powerful, but it works in these specific situations. Now, what happens when you find an image you really like? What options do you have? Well, let me show you. We'll take a look at this prompt. Chrono Trigger character concept pixel art scene of a galactic knight in sparkling armor. I was a big fan of image number two. I'm going to hit the U2 underneath the generation. This stands for upscale, which means it's going to send us a singled out version of this picture. Boom, right here. And now what options do we have? Well, for version 6 at the moment, we're given four options underneath the picture. First, I'll explain the variation buttons. We have very subtle and very strong. Now, if you were to click one of these variation buttons, Midjourney is going to send you four more images based on this picture. Very subtle will turn into these, which is like 89% the same image. A knight, gold armor, red cloth, nighttime background, two columns on the right side, some sort of a ruined castle. And that's a very high level interpretation of the image. But the image itself is different. You're getting four different subtle variations on the image you chose. And you're going to want to choose this when you're mostly happy with a picture, but you want to see what small tweaks could be made to it. This is also good for creating like cool slideshows on social media, where it's just one small change after the other. But back in our image, if you click very strong, this is what you'll get. Now these are quite different, okay, maybe like 85% the same, maybe 80%. We have the same idea of a nighttime background, some castle ruins, golden armor, red cloth, but the poses are a little different. Like in number three, he's looking a completely different way. So this is known as a strong variation because most of the time it's not going to resemble the original picture. It's going to be quite different, as different you can get while keeping the general ingredients the same. 
Does that make sense? This option is really powerful for fixing small imperfections in a picture. You're basically giving the bot a redo and it can often create something you like a lot more than the original. But we are not done with the variation buttons. If you go into your settings by typing in forward slash settings into the prompt box on Discord, you hit enter. First of all, I want to point out that you can select the subtle or strong variation to be your default from here. In this case, I have high variation mode selected, which means strong variation. And now if we go back to the original grid, instead of upscaling number two, if I hit V2, variation for image two, I'm going to get a strong variation of that picture. If you go back into your settings and you put low variation mode on, and then you hit V2, a subtle variation will be generated every time. If you're curious, I suggest sticking with strong variation, but as always, you can upscale the image first and then choose which type you want from there. Just had to let you know. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but there is an extra thing we can do with the variation buttons. Back in your settings, if you click this button right here, Remix, this means Remix mode will be turned on, and this means every time you hit a variation button, a new prompt box will appear and you have a chance to regenerate that image with a change prompt. Let me show you how it works. So variation buttons will be blue when Remix is turned off, but when Remix is turned on and we hit very subtle, the prompt box will appear and we can change this prompt however we like. You can erase the whole thing, but I don't necessarily recommend that. In my opinion, you should just add to the prompt. So we'll say a galactic knight in sparkling armor standing in a field of flowers. You'll hit submit and we'll get something like these, a subtle remix of that image. It's not the same as variations, remix definitely changes the picture. We are not getting the exact same night in these images, but we're able to change things and you can do this for time of day, you could do this for eye color, honestly any detail you want to add and the bigger details you do change can often result in some of the coolest images you'll ever see. There's just really no rhyme or reason, you're going to have to experiment on your own. But I want to point out that the results will differ if you use very strong. We'll do the same thing, Galactic Knight standing in a field of flowers, you hit submit, and we get these. Maybe similar looking knights, but quite different results from the original. Like I said, you can take Remix in a bunch of different directions. This was just to show you that you can access the Remix feature first through your settings and then through the variation button. Each variation button has two jobs, one without Remix and one with. Blue is without, green is with. I hope I'm making that clear. Now the other option you have beneath one of your upscaled images is two more upscales. Again, this may change in the future. You might see a 2x upscale or a 4x upscale. But for now, at the launch of version 6, we have upscale subtle and upscale creative. Let me show you both. Clicking upscale subtle will turn this image into this image, just a higher resolution version of our picture. You'll want to choose upscale subtle when you're really happy with what you already have. However, if there's any wonky parts of your photo, you might consider hitting upscale creative and that will turn into this. It's going to change your image. I mean, obviously it's the same, but you can clearly tell that they're different. It made changes to it. And again, there's really no rhyme or reason for what it's going to do. It's basically just going to reinterpret your prompt again and it's going to make some corrections. Now, because you can't control these corrections, I'm not sure that a creative upscaler will always be your first choice, but just keep in mind it's there if you want to experiment. This will raise the resolution of that image by twofold or maybe even more. Now, if you've learned something so far, I have something special to tell you about. For the last six months, I've been working on a mid-journey master course where I'll teach you everything I know in a more structured setting. I'm not sure when it will be completed and available to you, but if you're interested in an exclusive discount, you should consider signing up for my new newsletter. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Okay, now we get to move on to the fun stuff. Parameters. What are they? Well, there are things you can add to your prompt that will change the outcome. Things that will move you away from the default look of mid-journey. And the first parameter we're going to focus on is the stylized value. I use this a ton. The stylized value basically determines how beautiful your image is going to be. 
And I know that might sound simple, but it's a little more complicated than that. The stylized value is a toss up between how much the bot listens to your prompt and how much creative freedom it has. The values go on a scale from zero to 1000 with the default being 100. If you don't mention a stylized value, it's going to be 100. If you place a value lower than 100, Midjourney will follow your prompt more closely. And if you raise the value above 100, you're going to get more beautiful images that might come at the cost of some coherence or prompt accuracy. Let's go through a bunch of examples. I'm going to show you this prompt in all the different values. A cartoon bear dressed like a firefighter. The bear is wearing a red firefighter uniform. There is a small yellow duck in the right corner. The duck is wearing a blue police uniform. No mention of the stylized value, so the default is 100, and this is what we get. Some cool looking pictures, I love these. Now you can trigger the stylized value by adding dash dash s and then the number in your prompt. Like right here, I have it highlighted and we moved it all the way down to dash dash s zero. And what's the first thing you notice? That these aren't very good looking. The default is 100 for a reason. It's the perfect blend of listening to you and creating beautiful pictures. A lower value, stylized zero, is going to get you some ugly images. It's going to follow your prompt more closely, but you're going to lose some of the aesthetic beauty that Midjourney can bring to your prompt. You're really only going to want to lower the stylized value when you find that Midjourney just isn't listening to you at higher values. I hope that's making sense. Same prompt at stylized 25. I think these are still on the ugly side of things, but it's around S50 where I think you'll be comfortable. You can still get some pretty cool images this way. And then we have S75 just to show you what it looks like as you approach the default. Once again, I'll show you the default here, S100. But now take a look at what happens as we raise the value. Here it is at 200 and you can already notice some straying from your prompt. In terms of the duck no longer having a police uniform on in two of these pictures. 300 is very very interesting. Number one and number three is what I'm starting to expect from the higher values. A much more opinionated mid-journey. Like I asked for cartoon and it's giving me these sort of 3D graphic look, but number two and number four are just beautiful cartoons. So it's around this value where you're gonna start to see the biggest differences. Here we have S400 and it's honestly starting to look like some sort of real life movie. Like these are beautiful, you can't deny that. 500, we definitely lost most of the police uniform. Like, look at this bear right here. That's so cool. These are just gorgeous. 600, yes, Midjourney is ignoring most of our prompts, except for the main character, the firefighting bear. And it's placing it in these exact same scenarios. What I mean is moving away from the cartoon effect into this more 3D vibey effect. The higher the stylized value, the more you see what Midjourney thinks you want. 700, look at number two, that wet fur, that's so cool. 800, again, a very similar look in all four of them. 900, more of the same, I love number four here. And 1000, <laughs> look, there's a police duck in the corner, I was not expecting that. I think number four is really beautiful, I think they're all really beautiful. Now, am I suggesting you use a higher stylized value? Honestly, no. Unless you don't know what you want, and even if you do know what you want, maybe a higher value is just fun to experiment with to see what Midjourney is thinking on its own. But if you're looking for prompt accuracy, you're going to want to stick to the default or consider lowering it even more. All right, now we're moving on to my favorite parameter, the chaos value. You can trigger it by adding dash dash C to your prompt and then a value between 0 and 100. The default is 0. Keep that in mind. And we'll use this prompt as a template. Plate. Vintage Polaroid photo of a small alien dressed like Optimus Prime. Very cool mid journey. It listened to us. It listened to what I wanted. I like these images. And one thing you'll notice off the start with no chaos value is that they all look kind of similar. And what the chaos parameter does is it brings variety into your grid, meaning each of these pictures is going to start looking different than one another. And what are the costs of raising the chaos value? Honestly, chaos. A little bit of chaos is going to get you some really cool pictures, a lot of chaos, and you have no idea what to expect 
let me show you. Same prompt at Chaos 4, and honestly, it's around this digit that you're gonna wanna stick to. It just adds a little bit of spice to the generations while still maintaining what you wrote in your prompt. I'd say even going up to Chaos 8 might be okay in certain situations. It's fun to at least experiment with, but you'll see in number two, we're already moving away from what we asked for. I don't really think this is an alien dressed like Optimus Prime, but it is a small being at least maybe and at chaos 12 12 out of 100 is honestly too much these are amazing images i think they look so cool but you'll see that we've just strayed so far from the prompt that is this really worth it i don't know to me it is i like seeing what mid journey can create but i i don't recommend using this very often you might be more frustrated than normal. Chaos 16 is pretty hilarious. Like, look at this little guy down here. I'd say it'd be hard to get these images on their own. And the cool thing about Chaos is that you can just add Chaos to any prompt and get some really varied generations like these. 20? Love number three. <laughs> That's so funny. We'll jump ahead a bit here to 25. What can I say except, uh, except laugh, honestly. You're barely going to get what you asked for but they're still pretty cool to look at. Chaos 30, we get a vintage Polaroid, but no real sign of Optimus Prime. Although I do like number one, that's that's a cool Transformer picture. 35, we straight up just get Optimus here, and then I have no idea what's going on in these. 40, number two is cool. <laughs> look at this reptile alien thing, like that is hilarious. 45, love them. And just take a look at how different they are from each other. That's the key point of the chaos value. Chaos 50, you'll still see Optimus Prime come out in some sort of way in these generations. And then you'll get something like number four, which is just somebody in a field like, okay, like I said, I don't recommend anything over like chaos eight probably at the most. 55, number four here is awesome. 60, we got two Optimus, that's good I guess. 65, only one slight Optimus picture and the rest are nonsense. 70 is kind of cool, I like number one. 75, one clear example of a Transformer and more nonsense. Chaos 80, notice Optimus in number two and then look how strange the other ones are. Like what does number four have to do with anything? That is how much variety you can get inside of your grid. I'm not suggesting you try this. This is throwing darts with a blindfold on completely. 85, still two pictures of Optimus. That's kind of cool. Chaos 90, just making me laugh. 95, I like these a lot, especially these stacked stones here in a field. And Chaos 100, somehow Optimus shows up twice. One is in a hotel room. Those are just some examples of what a chaos value can do to one prompt. And feel free to use this at your own risk. It is one of my favorite parameters like I said though. And the next parameter I want to show you is called the weird parameter. You can trigger this by using dash dash w inside of your prompt and then a numeric value between 0 and 3000. 0 is the default by the way. And what does the weird parameter do? Well, it just makes your images look more weird. It's honestly the perfect way to describe what happens. I will note that it sticks to your prompt a lot more closely than the stylized value and definitely more than chaos, but I don't know how often you'll want to use the weird parameter. Let me just show you the examples. We're going to start with the base prompt, a cyberpunk dolphin made of mechanical parts swimming in the fluorescent Caribbean coral. I think these turned out great, but what happens when we add dash dash weird to the prompt? At just W50, we're already getting these, and again, I don't know how you would describe them other than more weird weirder you know weird 100 i like number three that sort of reminds me of a disco ball 200 you can still get some cool pictures 400 look at number two that's hilarious and i like number one a lot but these are weird right 600 uh, i don't know why you'd want to be getting this high and keep in mind it goes all the way up to 3800 honestly the different parts of the picture are starting to like blend together in my mind 1000 and maybe one out of four is appropriate i like number one and then the rest are just hard to tell what's going on we'll jump ahead a little more here's 1300 i like number three 1600 reminds me a lot of lego like literally this is oh man these look so funny 1900 and these are starting to get really difficult to look at the 
color palette just awful is a good word weird is a good word we got lucky with 2100 and i think these honestly look more normal than the previous one 2400 and as you can see there's really no way to know what you're gonna get with the weird parameter 2700 i like number three a lot that light coming off of the tail that's that's really cool and then weird 3000 the highest value <laughs> i don't even mind these that much but i can't in good conscience suggest using the weird parameter inside of your prompts although you could see that it still sticks to your prompt fairly closely but the results are just not ideal they're not beautiful in any way they are weird however i do think it's fun to combine the parameters i previously showed you that being a stylized value a chaos value and a weird value there is no perfect formula you might try something like this chaos 18 stylized 700 weird 450 and i use the prompt futuristic sports car on the moon i think number one is amazing i like number two a lot that's a fun little combo of parameters to try or you might try portrait of an instagram model old hollywood style surreal nature with the combo of chaos 6 stylize 80 and weird 35 some low values just to add an extra element of spice to the pictures i think these turned out great but now what do you do when you find a recipe of parameters you like you'll want to save it as a shortcut and here's how you do that in the prompt box on discord you're going to hit forward slash prefer and then we're looking for prefer option set when you click on an option box you'll see a list of shortcuts you've already created we don't want to deal with that for now right now in the option box we want to create the name for our shortcut what do we want to type into our prompt that will then expand into the parameters we're looking for i don't know about you or how your memory works keep in mind you can name this shortcut anything you like for me i like to sort of stick to acronyms so if i'm doing a chaos value a stylized value and a weird value maybe i'll just call this like csw1 so you type that in here and the next important thing to do is click on the plus one more that appears beside it. This is going to open up another option above called value. We're going to click on value and then down here back in the prompt box, we're going to input what we want the shortcut to evolve into. This being the combination of parameters we just found. Now, when I hit enter, it's going to set the shortcut of CSW1 to expand into the values we set. If I were to type in and prompt for a cute dog, the way you trigger the shortcut is by using dash dash. So we'll say a cute dog dash dash CSW1. When I hit enter, you'll see that it expanded into our values. So while you're experimenting and you find something that you really like, you save it as a shortcut so you can easily experiment with it across all of your prompts. And look how cute these dogs are. Oh, that's amazing. And have you noticed that I always get my generations in a wide aspect ratio, 16 by 9, but I've never typed that into the prompts? Well, that's because I have it saved as a suffix. And here's how you can do that yourself. Back in the prompt box, you're going to hit forward slash prefer, and you can type out prefer suffix or you can find it here in the menu. You're going to see a new value pop up above, click on it, and then down here in the prompt box, you can write whatever you like. In my opinion, I think this is best to use for aspect ratios. So I know that I use 16 by 9 a lot. I can put that right here and then I never have to type it into my prompts. Mid journey will add it at the end of each prompt itself. You could add words you commonly use, you could add stylized and chaos values again i recommend just sticking to an aspect ratio and the reason why i like it for an aspect ratio is because it's easily overridden in the sense that i could type a cute dog aspect ratio two by three and now even though 16 by nine is at the end of all my prompts because i type two by three it will appear first and take priority. And that's how we end up with cute dogs like these. I hope you're not sick of mid-journey just yet. There are a few more things you can do inside of version 6 that are extremely powerful. One of them that I want to talk about is image prompting. The easiest way to do this on Discord is to click this little plus button beside the prompt box and upload a file. You can choose the files off of your computer. I chose these to experiment with. Hit enter and Discord will throw them into a little grid right here. For image prompting, we're gonna wanna take this picture, grab the link, and place it into the prompt so Midjourney knows what we are referring to. One way you can do this is by clicking on the picture once. It will expand. Now you can right click, copy image address, go into the prompt box and hit paste Control v command v alternatively you can just click and drag the picture 
into the prompt box. That's probably way easier and what you'll want to do most often. Now we can hit space and we can even drag another picture down here. And then the beauty of image prompting is that we can add some words. I have no idea what's going to happen when I type in the CN Tower, a Toronto skyscraper. I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll hit enter and then maybe we can take this picture of the car and say a dragon flying through the sky. Here's that combination with the CN Tower. Some pretty cool pictures. I really did not know what to expect. And then here's the dragon flying through the sky from that picture of the car. Like That is hilarious. Now I'm not going to go very in depth into image prompting here. There is a lot to know about it. A lot of different things you can try. And if you really want to learn more, maybe that's when you should check out my course. Again, sign up for my newsletter in the description below if you want to be the first to know about it. There are still a couple more things that I can share with you here though. Now, if you want to just combine a couple of pictures without adding extra words, you can hit forward slash blend. That will give you the option to blend up to five images. At first, you'll just see one and two, but you can click down here at plus four more, and that will create a pop-up up here where you can choose images three, four, and five, as well as change the dimensions of the blend. Let's do image three, and then now we can pick any pictures from our computer. I'll choose that Spartan, we'll choose that scary guy, and then we'll add some color there. What do you think this is going to create? Blending is a lot like image prompting. It's basically the same thing, except you don't have the chance to add words to the prompt. That's really the key difference. Blending goes a lot quicker, image prompting might have more options available to you. Oh my god, these are so cool. That is basically a blend of all of those pictures. I think I like number one the most. And the last thing I want to show you in version six for now is the describe feature. You're going to hit forward slash describe. This will give you the chance to upload an image. We'll try this Spartan again. And when you hit enter, mid journey is going to give you four prompt descriptions based on that picture. Now this is an old version of Describe, this was made back in version 5, but we should be expecting an update to this feature sometime soon. So, Slash Describe is going to get a lot more powerful moving forward, and that's why I think you should know about it now. You can imagine all of them, you can click on any of the prompts that you like, in fact you can even click on them and tweak the prompt yourself. A little side note, an extra special tip that I'll share with you here, if you really want to recreate a picture, you would run it through the Describe function, you would then click on the picture, copy image address, and then we're going to paste that inside of the describe prompt. That will add an extra reference image to the description. Super powerful stuff. Oh, like these are so beautiful. I basically showed you everything that's available in version 6 at this moment, but there are a lot more features we can expect coming soon. In order to show you these, I'm going to take you back to version 5.2. Here we have the prompt Moon Goddess of the Ninth Realm. We'll choose one of these to upscale, and then we'll see a lot more options underneath that image. First of all, like I mentioned earlier, we might see these upscales in the future, that being a 2x and a 4x, but I really want to point to all of these buttons down here. Why don't we start with Vary Region? It is another variation button, but this is specifically in painting. I'm sure you've heard that term before. If we click on this, a new box will appear where we can either take the rectangle selection or the lasso tool, and we can change individual parts of this image. We can basically ask for an entirely new face. We could change her accessories. We could try to add something in this blank space over here. In painting is a super powerful feature. It's just not available yet at this time of recording but it's on the table, they're working on it, we'll see that in version 6 soon. Here's the generation of her that changed her face. You see how powerful it could be? Other than in painting, we also have the chance to zoom out. We can zoom out at a 1.5 scale or a 2x scale. Now those are pretty similar, I'm not going to lie, you're not going to see that big of a difference. But this works amazing when Mid Journey doesn't quite get your framing right. Especially in this case, maybe it cut off her hair, maybe you weren't happy with that and you want to see more of the image. Here's what the 1.5 would look like, and here's what the 2x would look like. But we aren't done there, you can also use custom zoom, and the prompt box will appear. So the zoom value isn't going to change very much, I don't think you can raise it too high. I don't think you can raise it past 2 to be honest with you, but the main point of this is that you can change your prompt so that when you zoom out, you can change what gets added around the image. Pretty cool, pretty powerful in its own right, but if this ever comes to version 6, here's why you would want to use it. We're going to want to change the zoom from 2 to 1, and then we can change the aspect ratio to anything we want. 
let's try two by three. And what that's going to do is stay focused on this image, but it's going to change the aspect ratio like this, which means we might see more on the bottom and the top. It's a different way of zooming out and it's the only way to change your aspect ratio, change the frame of the composition and save any image you've ever made. And then we come to this option, make square, and this is just maybe ideal for Instagram. Easily make any image into a square aspect ratio. You could do that from custom zoom for sure, but here's just a quick button for you. There you go. What do you think? But we are not done. In 5.2 and in the future, you should have these options as well. These arrows down here trigger the panning feature. If I click to the left, it's going to take this image and expand the frame to the left and create something new. We can do that to the right, we can do that up, and we can do that down. Now I do want to note that if Remix is turned on, again you can find that in your settings or you could type in prefer Remix into the prompt box. Hit enter and that will toggle the Remix feature. Now if you were to hit pan in a direction, a prompt box appears and you can change the prompt. We could say the legs of an octopus. Now this doesn't work very well in version 5.2, but you should know that this feature is available and will probably be way more powerful when it comes to version 6. Here are the results of panning left. We get a larger view of space. Here it is panning to the right and we get some more of whatever this background circular device is. Panning up and that's kind of cool I guess. Uh, I like where her hair is going here. And panning down we're going to get to see more of the character. Whoa and then panning down with the remix feature enabled the legs of an octopus we're going to get some tentacle like stuff going on here. That is pretty cool. Now there's one more really cool feature that used to be available in Midjourney and you should be excited about seeing this come to fruition in version 6. And I'm talking about style tuning. If you type in forward slash tune into the prompt box, you're going to be given the chance to write a new prompt in this tuning box. You could type in literally anything you want here. Let's just try something like a tropical sunset. It's going to create a test for you. A tuning test where mid journey is going to take that prompt in a bunch of different directions and you get to choose which style best suits what you were looking for you can choose between 16 32 64 and 128 directions I recommend just sticking with like 16 to start until you get used to what you're about to do we'll stick with the default mode hit submit are you sure yes this can get quite expensive just want to point that out i have a whole video on tuning maybe i can link it up here if you want to check that out but come back to this video because we are not done yet once the test is done it's going to send you a link and now this is going to open you're going to ask to choose between pairs Keep in mind, you don't have to make a selection on every pair. That's sort of the fun with it. But let's say you like this style here and then maybe this style down here. Oh, but you like the minimalism scene here and scrolling down. You really like this plain color palette here. You're going to see that a code gets created at the bottom and this code is dynamically updated. Anytime I make a selection, it gets changed. Now you can copy the code here, take it back in a discord, make sure version 5.2 is set. And then you're going to see this amazing outcome get created just using a style code. Style tuning is so powerful. It's one of my favorite features ever. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, it's not available in version 6 at the moment. And when they do make it available, it's probably going to look and act a little differently than what you just saw. But I wanted to show you what you can expect in the future. Keep an eye out for style tuning. It's the best. I do also want to mention that if you're interested in anime aesthetics, you should be checking out Niji Journey. N-I-J-I. This is a sort of subsidiary of Midjourney in a sense. Basically, it's a model that has been focus trained on anime. You can create similar aesthetics in Midjourney, but Niji Journey is all anime. We should be expecting version 6 of Niji Journey sometime soon in January, but for now I'll just give you a comparison between Midjourney version 6 and Niji 5. Here's the prompt, Gundam Mecha in version 6. And this is what we get kind of cool. But if you were to put dash dash Niji 5 in the prompt, you're going to get these. This is the default Niji look. And what's really cool about what this team accomplished is that they added a bunch more styles that you could choose from. What I mean to say is that if you added dash dash style expressive with the same prompt, this is the type of look you would get. You could also try style scenic for these more expansive compositions. Lots of background detail. And lastly, we have Style Cute, which is clearly focused on creating the cutest images possible. Now, I'm not saying all of those styles will be available in version 6. I don't know if that's the case. 
but this kind of idea is something that we can look forward to in the future. The next thing I want to show you is Midjourney's new website. It went through a complete redesign in the last couple of months and it is quite impressive. You'll notice right here at the top, Imagine is coming soon. We're not there yet, but the rest of the Midjourney homepage will look like this. The Explore page, where you can browse the most popular and recent creations from the entire community. In fact, you can even search for prompts. Here's every prompt involving Batman. This goes on forever. You see how fast that was? That search is like instantaneous. If you go over here on the left to my images, you'll be presented with your entire gallery. In order to download, you have a few different options. You can select all next to a specific day and download everything that you created on that day, or you can simply drag and select photos that way. Alternatively, you can hold down shift and deselect or select new pictures. Now, I'm pretty sure they will be adding an archive feature soon where you can look through what you've created on any day ever. However, until then, if you wanna search through your prompts, you'll click up here and let's try looking for the word neon. Do you see how quickly that populated? Every time I've ever entered the word neon in a prompt, it shows up that quickly. And you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it's all there just for you. Super fast, this new website is amazing. Another feature they have is rate images over here on the left. If you click that, you'll be asked to choose which image you like more, left or right, one or two. Rating these images helps tell the bot what we find most beautiful, and we can sort of correct the course of the entire model. Now, if you're one of the top 2,000 people to rate images in a single day, you'll be given one free hour of GPU time for fast generations. It's a really good deal, it helps mid-journey out, and you get a nice reward out of it. Now, I know I said creation will be coming soon, but I can give you a sneak peek of what that looks like. If you've made more than 10,000 images, you have access to the alpha mid-journey website. And here is where creation is enabled. Let's prompt for an underwater rainbow. All of your settings will be over here. We can make it in portrait, landscape, we can adjust the slider anywhere in between. You remember stylization, weird, and chaos known as variety here. We can bump that up and down. You can use the standard model or raw mode, change which version you're on, and whether you're generating in private or not. We hit enter and it will create our images for us over here. These look okay, maybe not the best prompts, but whatever. You get the point. Image prompting is actually really easy to do from the website. All of your image prompts will appear here and then you can drag and drop as you see fit. Let's just blend those two together. Oh, and it still has my stylized value, the weird and the chaos. Oops, let's see what it turns into. Here we go, these are amazing. Amazing. Those are gorgeous. Now I want to talk about what we can expect in the future. As far as updates to the website is concerned, we can expect creation to be enabled for everyone pretty soon, maybe by February. The website will also be updated with social features, similar to Discord, a place to communicate, create with each other, and receive help. We'll also have organizational features like folders, collections, and personal workspaces. Then, as far as overall tools that we can expect from Midjourney, they're working on things like consistency tools. That's for both style and character consistency. They know their audience wants it, and they're working on it. We can also look forward to some storytelling tools. It's hard to say how that will actually be visualized, but the team sounds excited about that prospect. Furthermore, there will be some sort of video generation coming in the next couple of months, and 3D generation probably sometime after that. Right now, version 6 was just launched, but we should expect version 7 sooner than later. I mean, within a couple of months. And a version 8 after that, and I think it's likely we see a version 9 before the end of 2024. I'm confident in saying that because of Midjourney's new strategy, and that is a date-based release cycle rather than a feature-based release cycle. We are going to see constant updates more often. There's everything you need to know about Midjourney in 2024. I hope you found this video useful. Leave a like on it so we can share it with more people. Subscribe so you don't miss all of the tutorials I have planned. If you want access to some exclusive prompts, you can support me over over on Patreon. I'm Nolan. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.